This video introduces redirecting output to a file or program. Looking at the diagram in your course book, you can see that a process structure is constructed with a number of channels, also known as file descriptors, to manage open files. Processes connect to files to reach data content or devices that those files represent. By default, processes, when they're first created, have three default channels, numbered 0, 1, and 2, also known as standard input, standard output, and standard error. The keyboard is normally connected to standard in, standard out is connected to the screen, and standard error is also connected to the screen. You notice that error messages from commands show up on the screen. But we can redirect each of those channels by using you know, greater than type syntax. We can say send the output or send the errors, somewhere else. This date command, I didn't redirect the output, I let it come by default to where standard output sends it, which is to the screen. By using the syntax for redirecting, and notice there's not a number in front of the greater than, but it's an implied one, which is standard output. I can save this to a file. By redirecting the output, it no longer comes to the screen. And we can prove, of course, that it's actually gone into the file. This is also useful for manipulating other files, taking, you know, a certain number of lines from one file and creating another file from it. It can also be used to combine files. See these files called file one through file four. I can concatenate them with the cat command. Into another file, let's call that combined. So each of the lines that happen to be in those other files combined into one. You've noticed that each time that we create a file in these examples, it creates it new or it completely overwrites it if it happened to already exist. If we want to append to a file, we can do that too. Let's append this text new line and put it on top of that combined file. Let's see how that looks. Notice the new line down at the end. So that is known as you know redirection appending. There are times when you do output that you generate error messages, and sometimes you want to save those messages, other times you're not interested in them. In this example, I'd like to make the error messages go away, or I'd like to, maybe I'd like to save them into a file. And the standard error channel is channel number two, so we use the syntax to redirect channel two. Notice that now that we're not talking about channel one, we need to put the number in front and we'll put the error messages into a file called errors. The rest of the output still comes out standard out, so that still comes to the screen, but the error messages are in the file. If I wanted to redirect both the output and the errors at the same time, I can do that. So send the output to a file called output, send the errors to a file called errors, and this is going to overwrite that errors file again with the same content, but it will overwrite it. Since I've redirected both output and errors, nothing comes to the screen, but I can look inside the file to see that output. We've been saving the error messages to a file Many times you don't need the error messages, you don't want to see them, and you certainly don't want to save them. So there's a trick to get rid of the error messages. Dev null is a special device. When you send anything to it, it quietly makes that 
stream, whatever was sent to it, disappear, which is what we're doing here. So since it does disappear, I can't show you where it went or anything other than, you know, the output file. But that's how you just make error messages that you don't care about disappear. So far, we've been sending output and error messages to different files. There are times when you'll want them both to go to the same file. And we use a special syntax for that, which is ampersand greater than. This will do both into one file. This syntax always overwrites the file. So using this particular syntax, I'm not able to add to this file, append to this file. We have to use a slightly different syntax for that. Uh, let's modify this to do that. What you do is you use the append syntax to the file you want to append to. So that's open to channel one, but with append thinking. And then you say, let's take channel two and let's redirect that to where channel one is already open. So channel one is open with append syntax to the file called output. Let's send channel two, which is the errors, to wherever channel one is already open. Now we already have, as you can see on my screen down at the bottom, we already have content in the output file. This. And we're going to append the same thing again on top of it. So you're now going to see it twice. So redirection controls channel output to or from files. The next concept is piping, which sends output to other processes. Let's list the user bin directory. And it scrolls off the screen. There's too much to see. So in this example, we're going to use the pipe symbol to send the output of one process to become the input of the next, and we're going to send it to less, which causes screen pagination. I was hitting my space bar to go screen by at a time. And there are lots of things you can do with pagination, tying commands together to take the output of one and further process it to another. You can also use a combination of piping and redirection. For example, taking the ls command and sending it to the wc command to do a word count, in this case with the dash l, a line count, to see how many files I have. And then taking that output and sending it to some file to save that end result. Including the how many file, that now becomes 19. Taking a time-based listing, sending it to the head command, which gets the top, we're going to ask it to get the top 10 off that listing. And put it into a file that is the 10 last changed files. So redirection, again, allows you to save anything into a file. But notice how I'm chaining together components using piping to make a more complex command. Regular piping is pretty simple. The last one is, is what we call a T, the idea of taking something and sending it two places. For example, when I do an ls-l and I send it to a file, I don't see the output on the screen. If I'd like to see it on the screen also, I can do a trick where I pipe it to the T command and tell T that one place I want to send it is to that file. Now this is going to overwrite it. 
But the T also allows it to go out its own standard out. And since I'm not going to redirect that standard out, it's going to end up coming to the screen also. So this is going to go into the file and it's going to come to the screen. And I can do a cat on file to prove that it actually went to the file also. Notice, same output. There are times when you'll want to process something to an, a whole nother command. Like if I take an ls-l output and I want to send it by mail to some, you know, student with a subject line, that will take that output and send it through mail. The difficulty is I didn't see it on the screen, I would have liked to have seen what I had generated in addition to mailing it. And I can check my mail to see that the mail message is actually there. So this one requires that you know the name of the window so that you can send to it. So we ask the window, what's your name? And then we use that information to do a T. So I tell the T command, to send it to dev pts zero and to also send it down the pipe to mail. So we should see it both on the screen and see it as a mail message. So there it is on the screen, one half of the T, and it's also generated another mail message. So a little bit more complex, but there's a lot that you can do with redirection. This concludes redirecting output to a file or program.